3ds Max 2011 and 3ds Max Design 2011 deliver a whole new way to think about materials with the introduction of Substance. Substance is a new smart map type that supports procedural materials called substances, created by Algorithmic's Substance Designer application. This is the object that we're going to be using to create our Substance material for, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up my Slate Material Editor, and I already have a basic Arch and Design material created that we're going to use to create our Substance-based material. So to invoke the Substance material, all I'm going to do is right-click in my view, and I'm going to choose Maps, Standard, and I choose the new map type called Substance that appears in the list. We immediately we get a Substance node, and to use the Substance, all we have to do is double-click on it to get to the Properties dialog box, and you can see we can click and browse. From here, we're taken to the list of Substance textures that are available for us to use. There's basically two types. There's Noises, which are grayscale materials like broken glass, caustics, dirt clods, electric bolts, things like that, things that can be used as masks or uh, other types of displacements on other materials. In the second category, textures, we have over 60 new substance materials that are available for us to use directly within the substance map type. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go find our marble material, and I'm just going to bring that up. As soon as we bring the substance material into the node, you can see a couple of things happen. We have a lot of output nodes from a single map. This is a really advantageous because this gives us the ability to, with one map, take advantage of things like a diffuse, specular, normal, bump, displacement, all generated on the fly from a single map. So to hook up a substance, very easy to do. It's just like any other map. We choose our diffuse channel and that immediately creates a diffuse channel and you can see that uh, our texture is already applied on our material. We can go ahead and apply a, a specular glossiness if we want to. If we're using a normal map, you know, we'd still want to introduce uh, the normal bump channel to control the direction, but we same, same procedure. We just drop in our normal map and we'll go ahead and put that into our bump map slot. We also have the ability to have displacement maps or height maps. Uh, in this case, we won't be using either of those. Now that we have it created, we can actually take a look at some of the parameters within here. First and foremost, you can see that uh, we have the, the parameters of the substance. Each substance has its own set of parameters that are defined when the substance is created in the algorithmic substance designer application. Now, we have the ability to control all kinds of formations within the marble itself. Asperities, if we want to increase damage, we can go ahead and crank up the damage amount. So, you know, we can see that it gives us uh, kind of a damage look to it. Uh, we can increase or decrease the swirls or the depth. The relief balance, we can just set this to be, you know, any number. And we, it gives us all kinds of parametric control over what the material is actually doing. We can also adjust the saturation if we want to or reduce it. Really lots of different uh, controls here. We'll bring that back down. And you can see uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility in what it is that we're doing with our materials. Once we have the parameters set up, we also have control over texture size. Now, initially, the texture is generated at a 512 by 512 resolution. We can go ahead and lock the aspect ratio, and we can set it to be anything that we want to be. And what this does is this affects, it regenerates the texture on the fly and displays it within the viewport. So we'll get a higher quality texture that's available, available to be seen directly within the viewport. Then additionally, we have the ability to control what happens to the texture at render time. So for example, we can choose to change the local settings, meaning that we can multiply it based off of whatever this number is. So we can keep our global texture size relatively small, but increase it or decrease it as we, as we need to based on how we're going to be using it. So you have a lot of control over the uh, texture size and the uh, procedural nature. Of course, we also have the ability to do some basic tiling. So we'll just go ahead and add in a tile of two here. And you can see that the texture automatically updates uh, within the scene. Just from one substance, we're able to populate several map slots on one material for quick and versatile editing of our materials. Incorporating substances into complex materials is just as easy. I've created a more complex material already based off of the substance material that we've just created. So you can see here, here's our substance map with the marble texture that we've already done. Here is our source map. Here's our normal bump. 
in our specular, just like we had before. We're doing a couple of different things. We're kind of grunging this map up a little bit, and what I've done is I've incorporated several different map types. We're using a composite map to combine an ambient occlusion map, which you can see here, that I've made using render surface. Using another substance, I've created another piece of grunge. This is also be a displacement map. And I've piped them all into our arch and design material. So if I choose this, I'll go ahead and select the object and I'll assign the material to selection. And you can see that once it comes up, we, are, we have a really grungy looking texture that has a lot of relief in it, has some displacement, is using both substance materials and standard bitmaps. And it gives you a really excellent look and feel to the material. Additionally, I've created a second material using a substance. Very simple, I'm using the grass substance and I'm just taking out the diffuse and the bump channel and we're going to use this to simulate moss or something growing up the side of these columns. I'm also using a mask here to blend between the two textures. So just using a blend material, I'll go ahead and pipe this in. I'll select our object, we'll go ahead and assign the material to the selection and then once we render this out we'll be able to see the effect that these two uh, materials have together on our object. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. So here's our rendering, and you can see that it's a pretty good match for what we're seeing within the viewport. The displacement channels are showing up really nicely. The blended texture is showing up really good. So substance materials allow you to dial in numerous attributes for dynamic, flexible, and virtually endless variations of materials and maps. 